Hi, I'm Michael Smith. At Berkeley College, we're committed to educating the public about the importance of higher education and its impact on our communities. That's why we're proud to support the important educational programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Partners for Health Foundation, partnering to make our communities healthier, better places to live. Berkeley College, Josh S. Weston, Meridian Health, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey. And by Cohn Resnick, Accounting, Tax, and Advisory, where forward thinking creates results. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You, you got it this? Back. Here it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. It is my pleasure in this One on Two segment to welcome two very special guests. Uh, chef Paul Kapner is a certified executive chef and director of the Community Kitchen at the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, a great organization. Also, for the first time joining us, uh, Daryl Walker is a chef at Eva's Village and also a graduate of the Food Service Training Academy in 2012. And that academy is tied directly to the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Now, these are complicated titles, but uh, <coughs> Chef Paul set us up for this. The Community Food Bank of New Jersey is? Is uh, I'm, I'm not going to assume everybody knows what it is. I oh, know what it is. Oh, okay. We know how great it is, <laughs> but not everybody watching in five or six states know. The Community Food Bank of New Jersey is uh, an organization that feeds people throughout New Jersey, 18 of the 21 counties in New Jersey. Uh, we reach approximately 1 million people every year, close to that, um, in, whether it's food or other mm -hmm. types of services. And I was proud to uh, be a part of last year's big fundraiser to host yes. it. Uh, your team raised a lot of money for a great cause, a lot right. of people who need help. And the uh, Food Service Training Academy, um, which is a terrific initiative which you graduated from, yes. which is tied to the, the uh, Community Food Bank in New Jersey. Describe yes. it, because you went through it. Yeah, I did. Um, what is it? It's a very intense program, is what it is. But uh, I loved it. I loved it. Describe you it. You go through uh, different courses. You learn how to cut correctly, so this way you don't cut your fingers off. Um, you learn how to make things from soups to sauces. Mm. You do cuisine. You learn how to deconstruct, like act, literally like break down a meal and just, it's the same elements, but you put it together a different way. Yeah, but back up, Darryl. Okay. How'd you even find out about this program? Uh, well, uh, I, was, I went to prison in uh, 2008 and I, uh, you know, through good behavior, I was allowed to go to a halfway house in Newark. And from there, uh, the food bank has ties with that halfway house. So I heard about it through there. I applied for it because I love to cook. Love? I love to cook. Always? Always. It's been a passion of mine. All right. Um, and from there, you know, I interviewed. After I interviewed, they were kind of iffy about me, only because, you know, um, I was due to get released before the program was over. So, you know, it's like they want to make sure I come back, I finish, uh, complete the program. But I assured them that I would, and I did. You were committed? Yes, I was. Describe the program. 16-week program, uh, all hands-on catering. I'm sorry, all hands-on cooking. Uh, it's mostly production, um, about six and a half hours a day in the kitchen, about an hour and a half each day in the classroom, so we challenge them both physically and mentally. Some uh, don't make it, though. Some do not make it. Why not? It, uh, because it's, it's a job. You're coming, you know, you're, as Daryl said, you're coming. It is a job. You're coming for a job. You get interviewed for a job. It's like you're any, any place else you're going to go for an interview, you, go, you get to be accepted into the program. It's not guaranteed. It's a free program, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, and I'm going to work you I'm the, uh, like, like a real job. I'm the employer, and you're the employee. Yes, we're going to train you. You're going to help us produce food for the people in New Jersey. But in the end, uh, uh, I'm going to help you uh, uh, get culinary training. So talk about a, talk about a commercial kitchen. 
Talk about, I mean, and by the way, you're in Eva's Village right now, yes. and, 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 and which is a great organization. Um, talk about the work they do. Real quick, 400 lunches a day? 400, sometimes more. And you are the person? Well, lunch, I assist with the lunch okay. for the uh, soup kitchen. But I'm more, I cook for dinner for the clients there. We have a lot of residents there, about 300. And Eva's, Eva's uh, uh, Village, just describe it. Yeah, uh, we have a soup kitchen. We do breakfast now. It's a new thing we started. So we do breakfast and we do lunch for the soup kitchen. Wow. And then uh, we do dinner for all the clients, all the residents that are there. So the graduates of the academy, they, they work in all kinds of situations. Correct. Biggest challenge about uh, you're a chef, right? Because that's a chef, Daryl yes. Walker. Difference between a chef and a cook. Uh, uh, Difference between a chef and a cook. A chef is the the term chef is you're in charge of the kitchen. You're a leader. You're a leader. Uh, he's a leader. He is a leader. Not just yes. cooking. He's a leader. Yep. He's Describe a leader. what it means to be a leader in that kitchen. It uh, you make all the decisions. You know it all falls on you. You you have to from top to bottom. You know if someone doesn't show up, you got to do it. You know and it's it's you from top to bottom. You're in charge. So uh, I've been obsessing over leadership the last few years. Wrote a book called Lessons in Leadership. So I got to ask you, okay. biggest leadership lesson you learned in the kitchen as a chef is. Uh, just having to take over, like having to fill in. Like Chef Paul said, if someone's not there to do the job that they're supposed to do, I have to jump in, I have to step in, I have to complete that task plus whatever other tasks that I'm required to do. Anything goes wrong in that kitchen, is it on you? Yes, it is. Even if it's their fault? Yes, it is. It's on you? It's on me. What's that feel like for you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you smile? <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, why well, does that make you smile? Well, because on one hand, I don't want to be, I don't want to take, you know, the failure of someone else or if someone else messes up. But, but on the other hand, when I complete that task mm -hmm. and it's done correctly, I love the praise that I get for it. What does it do for these, by the way, young men and women? Yep. Yes. What does it do for them, Chef? Uh, <clears throat> it, it, uh, it, it gives them self-esteem. You know, uh, some of our, our, our students come out of the prison system, as Daryl was saying, some, and a lot do not, but uh, it gives them a place where they can grow. Uh, in the food business, uh, you can you can. You what are the possibilities? Becoming chef, executive chefs in different locations. Uh, um, it, it just it's pride, you know. Uh, um, they can graduate from our program. It means they can get they can almost work in any kitchen, you know, as a as a cook or a prep cook. Uh, a place to start, and a place to grow. You know, I was it's our good friend um, Josh Weston told mm -hmm. me about this. Our partners for Health told us about it, and the folks at Berkeley College. Everyone was telling us about the graduation ceremony, how great it is. And you make both of you, I see your reaction when yeah. I say it. Yeah. What's it like? It's a wonderful feeling, man. Emotional. You have your very emotional. You have friends, you have family, like all all of your loved ones, the people who supported you from day one. And to accomplish that and for them to see your growth as a person, it's just it's very overwhelming. What did you feel you accomplished that day? Uh, that day I just graduation day. Just I accomplished just knowing that I can do something other than what I was doing, which was out there selling drugs. You know, that's so what you went to jail for. That's what I went to jail for. So I felt like it opened up another door for me. You know, um, I gotta ask you something, I'm sorry for interrupting. If you didn't apply for this program, mm -hmm. the food service training program, you didn't do it. You can't predict the future. Where do you think? you'd be right now other than in this studio with us on public broadcasting telling this terrific story. Where do you think you'd be? Um, it's a very strong possibility I would probably be back in prison because before the Food Service Training Academy, I really didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't know where I was headed before then. So chances are because that was my norm. That, that's what I was used to doing is going back to the streets, selling drugs, and going back to prison. How fulfilled are you right now? Very. How excited are you about the future? Very excited. And your son? My son? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real quick, teach him how to cook? Oh, <laughs> yes. My son loves to cook. <laughs> <laughs> is he, it a gene? He comes in the kitchen. He's like, Daddy, <laughs> um, can I help? Can I help? I want to help. So, you know, I love it. I love teach it. Teach him about cooking and life, right? That's right. Give a few seconds left. You got a big smile on when you look at him. Why? Because he's a success for us. I mean, I'm very proud of him. I mean, I, I couldn't, I, he, I can't say it. He has to say it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, he makes us look good. 
He makes us look good. I mean, he does. I I'll mean, you know, that. I mean, it, it, it's it's uh, a. Um, he he worked for us for for how many how long? Sixteen months. Oh, Sixteen months. Yeah, he was a, he when he graduated from our program, we have a, uh, something called CA, a culinary assistant, and it, we we look for the two top graduates to help us train the incoming classes. He's one of the best. He's, like, he's, he's one of the best. You're a role model now. Yes, he is a role model. You've got pressure on you. Pressure oh, is on. <laughs> and, and what That's we do is we, we follow our graduates after, the, after they graduate. Uh, and, and, and we try to stay in touch with them, you know, yeah. make sure they, they, um, um, if they need help, we'll help yeah. them, that kind of thing. So. Chef Paul, Chef Daryl, okay. sound good? Sounds beautiful. We're honored to have you uh, on the family honored of public broadcasting Thank um, you. and on the Files family as well and on public radio. Uh, joining us, and we wish both of you nothing but the best. And Thank you. We know you'll continue to be a great mo role model for a lot of people to follow you, um, including, most importantly, with three so, sons. Yes. Your son. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honored to have both of you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Both. To see more one on one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, Email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Steve Adubato here, uh, more importantly here with my good friend uh, Joe Marillo. We're at Nanitas in the park. This party happens every year. It's for the Cheer Me Up Foundation. Joe started it together with a group of people who care a great deal. Um, his brother, Barry, their partner, Vito. Um, talk about the Cheer Me Up Foundation. Your daughter, Gianna, was just here. She's running around having a great time. Talk about, Gianna, talk about this party, talk about the foundation and why so many kids are having a great time tonight. Well, basically, the Cheer Me Up Foundation helps all special needs children. So we, we figure we cannot change their lives, but what we could do is cheer them up for the day. Talk about Gianna. So my daughter, Gianna, who's 23 years old now, um, is special needs and had an operation back in 1992 and what happened was we were in the cancer ward we were in the intensive care wards there was children in there with no family my daughter had 30 people in the waiting room during her surgery mostly family Joe mostly family all family 30 people so my wife was so upset when she saw all these children that had no family caring for them we went and bought gifts for every patient in the hospital. And the day my daughter left the hospital, we hired Barney, we had music, and we went to every room in the hospital with music and gifts, and we cheered every patient up. Why'd you do that, Joe? We just felt, we felt that th these children needed cheering up and they didn't have the loving and support that my daughter fortunately does, did and does have. And it was one of the most exciting days of my life, watching these kids smile when we had Barney singing and taking a picture with Barney and handing him gifts. It was the most rewarding day. So on the way home, me and my wife were talking. and says, you know, we got to do this on a full-time basis. And that's how the Cheer Me Up Foundation evolved. And now we bring him right to our facility and we cheer him up. What you'll see, you'll have 12 different characters today. Santa Claus, elves, there'll be a choreographed show that we put on for the kids and we put a big buffet and they all leave with a gift from Santa Claus. Where do these kids come from, Joe? I mean, how do they find out? How do they get here? They're from different organizations. Like for example, my daughter went to school at ECLC in Chatham, which is a special needs uh, facility, school. Um, there's the um, Children's Institute in Verona. We have Epic from Bergen County, the Cerebral Palsy Center of Newark and Belleville. They know you have this party. We, we've solicited them, and now they've, they're part of our family. They come year after year, and they look forward to it. My friend's daughter, who just talked to me, said his, his daughter's autistic, and when she pulled up, she remembered the party last year, and she started smiling. He said you couldn't believe the smile on her face. He was all teared up. So it's, it's just these kids realize the event and they have realized the fun they're going to have and basically all we do is cheer them up what's it do for you and gail your wife who i know i mean the smile on her face is here from the beginning to the end of the night you see it what does it do for you guys this is probably the best day of the year for me every year it's a lot of effort it's a lot of work but when we see these kids 
glowing and smiling from ear to ear is probably one of the most exciting things you could ever experience that we are actually impacting them and cheering them up for the holidays. You know, and by the way, you see this microphone, Best of NJ, this is a, a website that we partner with with the Caucus Educational Corporation to uh, spread our content out to uh, a website that Joe and his colleagues have started up. Um, because frankly, we want as many people as possible beyond seeing us on public broadcasting and Fios and other places to see our content. Talk about the importance of people knowing about the Cheer Me Up Foundation. Why do more people even need to know about it? Well, we don't... Haven't you maxed out yet? We're full. We can't fit any more children, but we do events all year long. We'll do a val Valentine's dance at the CP Center. We'll have the special young adults here in two weeks, and we do another Christmas party and bring the New Year's in for them. So we do events all year long, long to cheer up all different types of organizations. What's the message, Joe, around the holidays and other times where people say, um, look, I just want to make sure I take care of my own kids. That's basically my responsibility. Um, you say what to them? Don't take life for granted. Don't wake up every day thinking you're expected to have life perfect. There are very unfortunate families out there that have serious issues with handicapped children and special needs children. And always help families through the holidays. Last question, you have two beautiful daughters. You have Gianna and you also have another daughter. Um, and, and they're very close and your family's close. Their relationship, talk about that, because there are a lot of families out there that have one child that has certain needs and another child that doesn't have those particular needs and they're connected in a very deep and personal way. Well, my daughter Natalia, who's a year, 15 months younger than Gianna, she couldn't wait for her to come home for the holidays. My daughter actually goes to a boarding school in Kentucky full time. Gianna does? Yes. So this is, she, she's missed the last four Cheer Me Up parties because we've had them a week earlier and she was still in school. So this year we've made it later because we, every year we have this party, Gianna's not here. We feel so empty that she not getting to enjoy it like the rest of her friends are. So um, Natalia was, couldn't wait for my daughter to be home. They love each other. They slept last night. They slept in the same room together. My daughter slept on the floor. My wife slept in the bed with Gianna and Gianna slept in the bed. So they had like a slumber party last night on our first night home from Kentucky. So Beautiful thing, isn't it? It's a great thing. Joe, I want to thank you and um, everyone at the Cheer Me Up Foundation that made a decision, um, you and Gail and everyone that decided to make a difference, because that's what this is. It's part of our series called Make a Difference, um, for making a difference in the lives of so many children and their families um, who are looking for a way to, to bring some joy and happiness, particularly around the holidays. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for having us, and happy holidays, and happy new year. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at steveadubato. We are pleased to welcome Mark DeGrandpre. He is a general manager at the uh, New York Red Bulls and Ray Kearns, senior vice president at Bayer Corporation. Good to have you guys. Thanks for having us. Now, you guys have an interesting partnership. Um, Five-year partnership into the second year. Describe it, Ray. Yeah, so Mark and I got together uh, about a year ago and said, you guys are doing some incredible work on a community-based level. Well, Bayer's doing some great things as well. And we thought to ourselves, let's sit down and talk and figure out as a way for us to work together to actually do even better things for the community. And so, ergo, comes a partnership that is now together for the next five years, and I couldn't be happier. Doing what kinds of things? Oh, we're excited. We're going to be uh, in the community annually, making sure we spread our message into the community, help the community grow. The essence of the partnership is not slapping logos anywhere. It's really the betterment of our local community. We both have our headquarters here in New Jersey. We want to make sure that we 
help enhance and better the community where we, we are every day and our employees are every day and we want to make sure that we become part of that mm -hmm. community and with Bayer we've done that. I don't want to assume anything. Um, people know of both brands but I want to make sure people know a little bit more. Describe the Red Bulls and then I'll give you a chance to talk about Bayer. So the Red Bulls have been uh, in Major League Soccer for 20 years. Uh, Red Bull, the company acquired a team in, 19, in 2006, the Metro Stars, then converted them to the New York Red Bulls. We have our own soccer specific stadium in Harrison, New Jersey. Um, we've done fairly well over the last two seasons. We've won the Supporter Shield, uh, best regular season record. And uh, the team is progressing. Our attendance is growing every day, every year. Last year we set a record for average attendance for the club. Our business is booming and we've got a reach in about 146 communities in the metro area and I think that's where Bayer comes in. Talk about the Bayer operation. So these guys finished first place last year in the, in the season, which was very happy for us in the first year signing our deal. <laughs> I, I thank Mark very much for doing that. Uh, well, you know what? Two, two winning brands come together, you, you okay. don't come in first place. So, Describe Bear in your operation. So Bear, you may know us um, as the Aspirin Company. We're a 150-year-old science company, though. We've got a large pharmaceutical division, a large agricultural division. We also have animal health. And, and frankly, when you look at um, the health consumer side of what we do, beyond Aspirin, we own Flintstones, Vitamins, Aleve, Coppertone, Dr. Scholl's. Mm. There's a lot of great products, a lot of great brands. 3,000 strong here in the state of New Jersey. We have our headquarters, $250 million investment out in Whitney, New Jersey, 800,000 square feet. We're a company based on science, and we want to utilize science, okay, to help solve some of the greatest challenges that are facing mankind today. And yeah, that's talk it. about the interesting other piece to this that I, that I we, our producers were just talking about this before we got on the air. One of the interesting parts of this is that your company is very engaged and interested in promoting science Correct. among young people. Kate through 12, yes. talk about that. So STEM is a challenge in, in America. Science, technology, engineering, Science, technology, engineering math. math, you guys. So the, the problem is this. Um, I can look at you right now and tell you we've got over 100 jobs throughout America that we can't fill because we don't have enough people with the background of science, technology, engineering, and math to fill it. What we found in America as a whole, and we do a survey every year for the last 20 years, we have found there's a challenge. There's a challenge because kids are no longer excited about science. So what we have done for the last 20 years is a program called Making Science Make Sense. We go directly into the schools. The people who teach the classes are bare employees of the 16,000 employees in the United States. Mm -hmm. We arm them with the, the tools to go into the schools and get kids excited. We've got an ambassador who is the first African-American woman in space. 20 years she's with us now for this program. And the whole challenge for us is how do you help kids get excited about the idea of science and math? give them hands-on experiences. Once they actually get to touch and feel it, mm. they get really excited. And so you take that program and you say, well, in our community, there's no greater organization than the Red Bulls when it comes to touching Science. kids. Give me the hook. We touch about 146 communities. We have a Red Bull training development program where we help kids learn the game of soccer. So we have partnerships with the, those, four, those communities. We touch 40,000 kids and their families and we think there's a hook there, right? For Bayer. Our kids. We're looking at a lot of video right those. now as you speak. Keep talking. Absolutely. So we connect those kids. We can introduce them to Bayer, the brand, and what the brand does in the marketplace and help them grow the interest in science and soccer. Because ultimately our goal is to develop not only soccer players, but good individuals, good citizens that go on to become productive in their local communities. And we think with Bayer we can do that. We, see, when you look at the World Cup soccer ball um, last year, that ball was made with Bayer material. We had a division. Is that right? Yes, that's 100% right. That ball was made with, with bare material. Now, we've since spun that division off, but it goes down to the science. Look at soccer, angles. Think about how when you kick a ball, reaction versus, an action versus reaction. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to teach kids, and we think this is where one of those areas goes, because obviously soccer is growing with, with great importance here in the United States. People, kids love soccer. Mm -hmm. Parents are loving soccer. And so put this together, we think there's a winning combination here. There's another part of this. We're about to show some video, I believe. <clears throat> Both organizations came together to honor our veterans. Mm -hmm. yes. Talk about it. Every year, as I said, on September 11th, we honor our veterans. Last year, Bayer jumped in and helped us support that, and we've continued that process over the years, and we think it's important. Again, veterans are part of our community. They're working in our community, and we want to make sure we provide them opportunities to be recognized for what they've done. And last year, Bayer did a tremendous job of supporting our match and really engaging the veteran community. You know, it's so interesting. We were talking a little bit earlier on our team about a day of service. You know, we, we do a series called Making a Difference uh, with our uh, production company, trying to identify <clears throat> organizations and individuals who make a difference in the community. 
You give your employees three days, you said? Three days a year to volunteer in the community. We did about 365 community appearances last year with our staff and players. What's the whole, and without getting into a lot of detail, but to help us understand this, do you feel there's a basic responsibility of corporations, sports teams, corporations like yours, to create a culture and environment where days of service, giving back, yes. making a difference, is literally part of, not something nice to do, but it is what we will do. It is, it is for, for us, it's in our DNA. Who we are. Who we are is part of our culture. We want you to take those days. We want you to go into the community. Now, in many respects, we'll set up certain things, again, like with the Red Bulls, and Mark and I are, are less, this past season, we're, we're in a conservatory park in Newark, in New Jersey. It was, yeah. it was 110 degrees. We're sweating. <laughs> we're lifting these plant boxes and wheelbarrows. And we, day we, of service. We got yeah. dirty, man. Yeah. We got dirty that day. But it is part of the DNA of giving back to society. I mean, yeah. you want that as part of your culture but you have to foster it. So yeah. giving opportunities like the Red Bulls or frankly saying, if someone says, well, my kid's got this thing going on at their school, we're gonna build a playground, can I go do it? Yes, you can. In the spirit, real quick, before I let you out of here, uh, we're doing a series of lessons in leadership. You've seen all kinds of things on the sports end, uh, sports uh, business end as well. Number one leadership lesson you've learned is? You've gotta be honest and trustworthy. Every day you've gotta be honest, transparent, and trustworthy. It's what's gonna be the key to success when you become a leader. Number one leadership lesson you learn, not just about corporate life, but about um, the nature of other people and how giving they are or aren't. I think the lesson I've learned pretty early on was engagement. Engage your people around you. Engage those people who um, maybe don't necessarily agree with what you have to say. You can stand before them and actually have a direct conversation that is based on respect and trust. I do think at the end of the day, people will give you that, that trust that you're looking for, whether it's a, you're a corporation or whether you're an individual. Engage, have the dialogue, have the conversation. Don't, don't let lawyers run the conversation. That part, we're gonna remember that, <laughs> especially. Don't let lawyers run the operation, the conversation. Mark and Ray, I wanna thank you so much. You have a great uh, partnership between Bayer and the Red Bulls, and check out the Red Bulls over in Harrison. That's right. Great job. One on two this time. Thank Love you. Guys. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Partners for Health Foundation, Berkeley College, Josh S. Weston, Meridian Health, PSE&G, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, and by Cone Resnick. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. I started feeling this pressure in my chest. The doctors and the nurses that were attending to me, that they were of such excellence. They were wonderful. You know, they, they put my mind at ease. I owe my life to them. I, I, I don't think I really would be here if it was, wasn't for them. Because of the way they handled everything, um, I think that's really why I'm here. I felt that I was in good hands.